Asia urged to explore options to improve energy efficiency and affordability. Malaysia needs productivity boost for growth. Good evening, you're watching the evening edition of News on 2. Prime Minister Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad says Malaysia must recognize the potential of its neighbors to force strategic alliances on the back of a prosper thy neighbor policy that promotes the concept of shared prosperity. Now, he said the strategic alliances would lead to a new energy future that is sustainable and secure for generations to come. We must therefore recognize the potential of our neighbors to forge strategic alliances on the back of a prosper thy neighbor policy that promotes the concept of shared prosperity. Only then can we forge a new energy future that is sustainable and secure for generations to come. The Premier said this during the opening of the 20th Asia Oil and Gas Conference, or AOGC 2019, in the federal capital. He said there are increasing concerns over the sustainability of global economic growth in the face of rising financial, political, social and environmental challenges. According to the International Energy Agency, or IEA, global energy consumption in 2018 increased at nearly twice the average rate of growth since 2010. Dun Dr. Mahathir said more countries were pursuing prosperity and a better quality of life. As a result, the Premier noted that energy companies must adjust their strategies and practices to navigate the policies and regulations adopted by countries that are aligned, for example, to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals Framework and Paris Agreement on Emissions Target. Meanwhile, Tun Dr. Mahathir says the recent downgrade on Petroleum National Barhats or Petronas domestic issuer and foreign currency senior unsecured ratings is not expected to affect the National Oil and Gas or ONG company. Speaking to reporters after delivering his keynote address at the AOGC 2019, Tun Dr. Mahathir downplayed the re-rating, which came due to the close credit linkages between the ONG company and the Malaysian government. Ya itu Moody's punya assessment. Tak semestinya Moody is right. Kadang-kadang orang ini buat assessment yang uh, tak betul. Jadi kita tak boleh nak tegur mereka sebab mereka bebas daripada segi apa yang kita lihat Petronas sedang buat sekarang ini saya yakin uh, down downgrading ini tidak akan uh, menjejaskan uh, progres teras Concurrently, the Premier said Malaysia does not necessarily follow the opinion of rating agencies regarding the country's rating profile, which is affected by concerns over its federal government debt level and reducing fiscal flexibility under current fiscal policies. Earlier, Petronas emphasizes that its strong fundamentals remain unchanged despite Moody's investors' service downgrading its credit ratings to negative from stable. Now, Petronas, in a statement released recently, said the company has consistently maintained a conservative financial policy and healthy net cash balance that enables the company to withstand volatility and shocks in the market. This is demonstrated by Petronas's recent financial results in the first quarter of 2019 and a full year of 2018, which was supported by the company's continuous efforts to increase operational efficiency and commercial excellence. The National Oil Corporation issued a statement following Moody's announcement to lower the credit ratings subsequent to the publication of its updated cross-sector methodology assessing the impact of a sovereign credit quality on other ratings, published on Thursday. Under the new methodology, it is less likely for a company to be rated a two notches above sovereign. Based on Moody's updated assessment, Petronas no longer meets one of the characteristics required for a two notch uplift above sovereign.
Malaysia needs to increase its productivity if it is to achieve its goal to become a high-income nation in the next decade. International Monetary Fund or IMF Managing Director Christine Lagarde said despite the economic success over the past 20 years, Malaysia's productivity did not grow as much as the country had hoped. Now, according to Lagarde, Malaysia can meet this challenge with creativity and enhance its recipe for success. To get there, she said there is a need for the right mix of ingredients to create an inclusive and sustainable long-term growth. We meet at a moment where support for international cooperation is being questioned in some corners where it's fading. Global trade growth has been subdued for more than six years, and the largest economies in the world are putting up new tra trade barriers. This will have an in, an in, an, a direct impact on an integrated and open economy. Any she said this during a special engagement session entitled Ingredients for Good Governance and Economic Prosperity at University of Malaya today. She outlined three key ingredients that Malaysia should pay attention to in order to improve productivity, namely improving governance and tackling corruption, investing in high-quality education and boosting labour force participation of women. The IMF, Lagarde said, believed that taken together, these efforts could raise a female labour force participation rates to over 56% by year 2020. Malaysia recorded a rise in chocolate exports worth 560.03 million ringgit since 2015, up till last year. Primary Industries Minister Teresa Cox said the increase was due to the efforts of 51 local chocolate production companies who successfully marketed their products to 128 countries. Elaborating further, Theresa said the value of the country's chocolate exports in 2015 worth 470.99 billion ringgit has risen to 1.03 billion ringgit last year. Ini menunjukkan yang kita memang ada satu potensi menjadi pengeluar coklat yang yang paling penting di di dunia. Jadi saya berharap warga Malaysia bila pergi coklat lihatlah buatan dari mana. Berilah coklat buatan Malaysia. Dan kita mesti menyokong industri kita yang mana saya memang gembira untuk lihat industri koko dan coklat kita ini tengah berkembang. Theresa said this to the media after officiating the opening ceremony of the Commodity Products Exhibition at the Sinai International Airport. She said the top five export destinations were Singapore, Indonesia, Japan, the United States and China. In addition, Theresa said that local companies are also producing quality chocolate aside from the exclusive packaging. She also said as of the first quarter of this year, Malaysia has registered a chocolate export value of 233.42 million ringgit. Coming up, a government to promote a sex education through YouTube. That story up next. Stay with us. Welcome back. The Women, Family and Community Development Ministry today launched a sexual predation awareness campaign via digital medium YouTube. Deputy Prime Minister Dato Sri Dr. Wan Aziza Wan Ismail said the campaign is the government's latest effort to reduce statistics of children falling prey to pedophiles. Now, speaking at the launch of the campaign in Putrajaya today, Dato Sri Dr. Wan Aziza said YouTube's influence as an entertainment and interactive educational platform needs to be taken advantage of in a bid to spread awareness amongst children across Malaysia. The one-minute video targeting 150,000 children in the country is in the form of an advertisement. Child must know where the uh, barrier is. Mana is that is no 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 dan kita mestilah sampaikan kepada mereka. Kerana kita kadang-kadang tidak dapat mengawasi anak kita sepanjang masa. Dan inilah untuk mereka sendiri untuk mengenali dan uh, tahu pada untuk diri sendiri mereka bila mestilah mereka buat apa mereka perlu buat kalau ini berlaku pada mereka. 
Moreover, she said educating. Moreover, she said educating young children on the subject is important, taking into consideration that offenders can be amongst family members or those close to the family. Dato Sri Dr. Wan Aziza added that parents can lodge reports of such incidents through Talian Kasi 1559 and the 999 emergency line. Prime Minister Tun Dr. Mahathi Mohamad said a specific study must be carried out before any transfer of foreign nationals occupying illegally the Bukit Malut area Langkawi could be implemented. Now, the Prime Minister said this is because all costs involved in that transfer must be borne by the government. Tun Dr. Mahathe, who is also the Member of Parliament for Langkawi, said it is not a simple matter as it involves the settlement of foreign nationals and thus one must take into account the sensitivities of the local residents. Jadi kita kena pindah, kita kena cari tempat bagi dia duduk dalam keadaan lebih sempurna dan kita juga mesti tentukan mereka adalah orang yang bekerja yang mendapat pendapatan yang cukup untuk secara hidup mereka. Kalau mereka ada di situ, itulah yang berlaku dan ini berlaku di mana-mana tempat pun. Kita lihat setinggan kerana mereka, pendapatan mereka amat rendah, biasanya a daily newspaper reported that the coastal area of Bukit Malud was estimated to have more than 800 houses occupied by between 5,000 and 8,000 people permanently. The newspaper likened the area to the squatter areas in Sao Paulo, Brazil and Mexico City in Mexico, which reported that crimes and drug cases were frequently reported. Commenting on the statement by Inspector General of Police Dato Sri Abdul Hamid Badur, who was reported to have said that the resort island ran the risk of becoming a drug factory due to the uncontrolled dumping of drugs, to Dr. Mahathe said this was difficult to control because it was an island and had many entry points. Discussions were centered on how we could. Meanwhile, Tun Dr. Mahathe has refuted the allegation that the civil for feature suits are filed against 41 individuals and entities, including several AMNO state liaison committee members, were in an effort by the government to bankrupt other party. Now, the Premier said if this was the move and motive, the government could have done that much earlier. No, no question. If we want to bank up, we could have done that earlier, much earlier. We have allowed Najib quite free. Although he's been charged, he's going around Menjadi Bosco. Yesterday, AMNO's Veterans Club Secretary General, Dato Mustafa Yaakob, reportedly claimed the civil forfeiture suit against AMNO was a bid by Pakatan Harapan to bankrupt the party. The list includes the liaison committee for AMNO Selangor, AMNO Pahang, AMNO Keda, AMNO Johor, and AMNO Sabah. Some AMNO leaders had claimed that the move was the Pakatan Harapan government's plan to get rid of the party and did not rule out the possibility of creating another AMNO if the existing one is dissolved. On this, Tun Dr. Mahathe, who is also Pakatan Harapan chairman, said he did not mind if the party had plans to create a new one, but whatever wrongdoings committed previously had to be faced according to the law. A police a senior officer was charged in the Johor Bahru Sessions Court for two counts of soliciting and accepting a bribe. The 33-year-old accused, however, pleaded not guilty before Judge Faiz Yaudin to both counts. The accused was charged with soliciting a 3,000 ringgit bribe from Lao Shi Kun for himself on the 4th of October of 2017 and went on to accept 2,500 ringgit on the 5th of October in the same year. The money is believed to be an inducement to allow Lao to continue running an unlicensed money lending business in the district of Batu Pahat. The prosecution was conducted by MACC Deputy Public Prosecutor Nur Sharina Raisan, while the accused was represented by counsel Chua Shui Chien. The judge set a 20,000 ringgit as bail with one shwati and fixed a 23rd of July for the case we mentioned. The offence under Section 16, Subsection A, Subsection B of the Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission Act 2009 and Section 17, Subsection A of the same Act and Section 165 of the Penal Code. 
The Batu Pahat Zone Malaysian Maritime Enforcement Agency, MMEA in Johor, has successfully crippled the attempt of two men to smuggle in 45,000 juvenile lobsters. The suspects, aged 24 and 25 respectively, were arrested at 12.50 a.m. earlier today. According to Batu Pahat MMEA Zone Director, Maritime Commander Mohamed Othman, upon further inspections, authorities found 19 polystyrene containers containing 450 packets of juvenile lobsters. The loot, including a boat used for the smuggling, is worth an estimated 90,000 ringgit. Both suspects and the loot was taken to the Batu Pahat Maritime Zone for investigation under the Customs Act 1967 and the Fisheries Act 1985. The Malaysian Maritime Enforcement Agency, or MMEA, has impounded an Indonesian fishing boat and detained its skipper and six crew members at about 28 nautical miles from southeast of Pulau Jara, Pera, yesterday morning. Now, Perak Maritime Director, Maritime Captain Wan Mat Wan Abdullah, said the enforcement unit also seized 100 kilograms of fish from the boat, which was spotted by Maritime Malaysia patrol boats while carrying out patrols and enforcements at Perak Waters at around 8.40 a.m. In a statement today, he said the boat without a registration number was detained when all the six crew members were fishing. Moreover, he added that the inspection found the skipper had failed to submit documents in relation to the boat and all the crew members did not have valid identification. Captain Wan Mat said the skipper and crew members aged between 20 to 46 years old were investigated under Section 15, Subsection 1, Subsection A of the Fisheries Act 1985 for fishing in Malaysian waters. A tourist from Saudi Arabia drowned while swimming near the Pantai Tengah Beach in Langkawi, Kedah yesterday. The remains of Hussein Musa'ad Alawif, 51, were located at 6 p.m. on Sunday, about 30 kilometers from where he was last seen. Alawfi, who was staying at the nearby resort with his family, was swimming with his two sons, Abdul Rahman, 13, and Yasir Hussein. Alufi, 21, at 3 p.m. when they were swept away from the beach by high waves and choppy waters. It was learned that the trio had taken to the water despite a red flag warning cautioning holidaymakers against swimming due to high waves and strong currents. They were also conducting their activities outside the designated safe swimming area. According to Langkawi Civil Defence Force, Officer for Disaster Operations, Lieutenant Azam Shah Apiaral, an emergency call on the incident was received at 3.18pm and 10 APM members from the Pantai Chenang, Pantai Tengah and Pulau Paya stations were rushed to the scene. The rescuers managed to save two of the victims, a boy and a young man, at 3.22pm, but Alaufi could not be found. Lieutenant Azam Shah further noted that the body was handed over to the police for further action. That concludes this evening's edition of News on 2 in our top story. Asia urge to explore options to improve energy efficiency and affordability. Thanks for watching.